And um, I guess we can begin. If, uh, you're ready, Jose? Should I start um, the introduction? All sure. right, great. Uh, hello and welcome everyone to AI Literacy and Prompt Engineering. I'm Dr. Anwar Hijaz, Associate Faculty in Political Science at Saddleback College and Faculty Support at the CBC. I'm very excited to introduce our facilitator, Jose Antonio Bowen. Uh, Jose has won teaching awards at Stanford, Georgetown, and many other awards, was the Dean at the Miami and Southern Methodist University and president of Goucher College. He has written over 100 scholarly articles and, and he is author of many books, including most recently, Teaching with AI, AI Practical Guide to a New Era of Human Learning with, with Edward Watson. Stanford honored him as a distinguished alumni scholar and he has presented keynotes and workshops at more than 400 campuses and conferences in 46 states and 20 countries around the world. He's now a senior fellow for the American Association of Colleges and Universities and also does innovation and inclusion consulting for a wide variety of Fortune 500 companies. During the webinar, we'll share a survey link for your feedback and I will be posting the survey in the chat about within 40 minutes at the 40 minute mark and then every 15 minutes afterwards. Please complete the survey. It really helps us at one to improve future programming. And while at one doesn't offer badges for this webinar, if you need proof of attendance for flex credit or professional advancement, you can stay until the end, complete the survey and request a copy of your responses via the Google form as a confirmation. This webinar will be recorded and a copy will be available on the at one website. So with that, I will turn it to um, Mr. Jose. Hi, everyone. So uh, we have about 90 minutes uh, together. Uh, you um, are on a computer, I'm hoping, so you will probably open up a new window uh, and we will uh, drop the two links again uh, there now. Um, so the first one I'm putting in here uh, is you wanna click on that in a new browser window because we're going to do lots of uh, prompting and, and various sorts of things. I, I should say I'm a little, I, I'm not thrilled with the term prompt engineering because I think it implies that you need some sort of special skills um, and, and there's a code to it. But in fact, what's interesting about large language models is that in fact, you don't need code, but you do need to talk to it as if you're talking. Uh, did that freeze for everyone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, it yes. looks like he dropped yes. from the call. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, give us a moment. Let's see what's going on. I don't think um, Jose is no longer on the call. Michelle, do you see that? Oh, no, he is. Hmm. Yeah, let's just give them a minute. Okay, he removed himself, so he's probably, um, yeah, give him a minute. Beauty of technology. <laughs> If you folks didn't hear um, Jose's prompt as he was starting, if you could click on that link, uh, the prompts link that we have, we'll put it in the chat one more time. Um, if you right click on it, you should be able to copy the link and then in your browser, go to open a new window and paste it in. That way you'll have a clean window and it might be a good way to, good fresh way to start things. While we're waiting, can I ask, I, my Zoom updated, so everything looks different. Um, oh. are, is this being recorded? Yes, it is okay. being recorded. Careful. Um, and uh, since we have a moment while we wait for Jose to get back on, uh, we do have upcoming webinars coming up. In our previous webinars, if you missed the last one with Dr. Michelle Kansky-Brock or the last one with Jose, they are posted, the recordings. Um, so if you're interested in registering for any future ones, um, feel free to do so. 
and I'll drop the link for that. All right. Sorry about that. Um, I think I'm okay. We had just a blink of power uh, and that reset all of my, uh, but I have fiber, so I should be okay. You can hear me? Yeah, we yes. good. I'm, I'm getting this, you know, unable to establish secure connections so that, um, but let's, it's, you know, it's raining. So we'll see. Um, my apologies. All right. Let's, uh, let's actually try to do something here. Um, I need to be made co-host again or having shit. Um, sorry, so it reset all that. Um, there we go. Okay, look at this. Fun with Zoom. Okay, so let's actually start um, by, by just getting started uh, with some prompts. So um, let me, so I've, we've, everybody has that, um, oh, good. It didn't set reset all of my, that's good. I can use this. All right. I dropped so what them. I want, great. Thank you. Yeah. So, so you should be looking at this, right? So this is my prompting page. Um, so what I want you to do is to click on a couple of these, uh, models. So everybody should have chat GPT. Uh, and so, Oh, no. Oh, what a bummer. We will wait some more. <laughs> um. Yes, technology. <laughs> okay. I see the a message just, saying, "Oh, go ahead." Yeah. Okay. So just just make sure you keep making me host again. I don't. I, I that was weird. Uh, because again, it looks okay. Um. So if you've not used, if you've if you've used Gemini, I mean, you should use Gemini at some point, but the paid model is substantially better. You can now get access to the 1.5 Pro temporarily, uh, and it's inside a couple of the things that I'll mention later. Um, but you should also try some of these other uh, models. So first of all, Latimer uh, is trained on only licensed and verified black and brown sources. So it's a different perspective. I will demonstrate that in a minute. Um, if you're a science person, you need to need it to do math. Wolfram Alpha is, is essential. Um, Pi is, is, does dialogue, which was unique for a while, but now others do dialogue as well. Um, and there are some other types of models um, here as well. So uh, then you should try at least one open source. Um, Meta um, is the one I suggest. Uh, it's, the, it's the other really big, high quality, good model. Um, it, it's called Llama. Uh, if you don't get it through Meta, you can get it through Hugging Face. Um, and there are some, right, there are some Chinese models. There's this model Falcon, which is um, um, from the UAE. Uh, so there are some other models that think in different ways. Uh, and then you should try perplexity. And for now, that, that's enough to get you started. All right, so open up a couple of models, uh, sign in, make sure that works. Uh, and then, so I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Um, so, but make sure so you should have a, a new browser with five or six models. Um, I'm sorry, I came in a little bit late. What am I supposed to be signing up on? Uh, so this, um, here is the, I'm putting the prompt back in here. I'm oh, sorry. So, so that's okay. okay. Click, okay. click on, click on what's in the chat. Okay. And, and then um, you'll see there's a whole bunch of links there to models. And so I would open up a new window and open up four or five, six, different AI models that you can try. Okay. Great. And then scroll down. I know there's a lot. We'll come back to some of this to where you see this workshop prompts. All right. So here are a list. It says getting started. 
here are a list of prompts that will get you some better answers. So, right, part of the problem with AI is that people, right, A, they use the wrong AI for the wrong thing, right? You need a hammer and you're using a screwdriver. So you have to have some idea that the models are different. But the other problem is that people will ask it something dumb, like, uh, you know, what time does, does my movie start? And then it gives it the wrong. So, well, that, yeah, that was a factual. Just Google that. Um, we will come back to that because this week the search tools chat gpt did introduce web search this week which i really does work pretty well but it's different than google and you've got to understand a couple things about that um so i like this you know provide 10 20 ideas for for how to introduce college students notice i've put x and y there because i want you to customize it so i'm going to give you a demo and then i'm going to turn you loose for a minute so um so i'm going to try it here uh, first in in claude Right. And so here is here is my prompt. So notice I've customized this. Why? Because I don't know about your biology class. I don't know about. Right. I teach music. So I want it because I can then evaluate these answers. Right. So as we talked about last time, using AI is really two things. One is asking better questions and the other is evaluating answers. That sounds familiar. Right? That's what we do. So in order for me to evaluate the answers, I need to ask something I actually know about. So. It, but AI is also a language model, right? These are large language models. So they're based on context. So you really want to give it some context. What type are these majors, non-majors, first year students? What's the name of your university, your college? Um, are they working at night? Do they, you know, are they Latino students? You know, tell me a little bit about the students, right? So I do that and I paste this into Claude and then it gives me some answers. So, so here are some ideas. So musical evolution timeline, playlist through time. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I mean, interesting escape room, social media, right? So these are, again, I don't need 20 good answers. I need one. And by the way, I want it to hallucinate this. I want it to give me new ideas. That's what hallucinations are, right? It's it's creative. I want it to be creative. Um, so this is what Claude does. Claude is the most verbose. If I go to perplexity and ask exactly the same question, which is what I'm going to have you do in a minute, um, I get shorter answers. Perplexity is a little more... Um, uh, a little less verbose, right? Use popular movie soundtracks, compare the virtuosity of classical players to modern day athletes. Yeah, okay, not, you know, great. Um, but then I go to Latimer. So remember I said that Latimer was trained on black and brown sources. So it's going to think differently, right? So there's the same exact prompt. So notice it says, right, look at number two. Compare classical composers to contemporary. Okay. Highlighting how Beethoven's revolutionary spirit mirrors that of artists like Beyonce or Kendrick Lamar. So notice it knows who Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar are because it's Latimer and Chat GP, right? It didn't, it didn't compare, didn't ask me to say, you know, didn't give me, you know, white pop artists. It gave me because it it has a different training, right? It's been trained on black and brown sources. So it thinks differently. Falcon will do that for the for the Arab world. So this is useful. Right, so to, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a prompt and copy and paste from my website any of those getting started prompts. Um, this is a pretty pretty easy one because it's easy to evaluate. Ask it for ten or twenty ideas, but then customize it. Give it some more information, but then copy and paste the same exact prompt into three or four or five different AIs to evaluate the response. Because that's how you're going to get a sense of oh, this is useful for me. This is not, or this is one's better. Questions? Oh, I'm going to let you do that for a few minutes. I have a question. Please. Would I get different results if I just put the same prompt into Poe and then come? So, yes. So there are two consolidators. One is Poe. The other is Chat Hub. So the other way to do this is to use Poe or use Chat Hub and then select a different group. Actually, BoodleBox will also do this, and BoodleBox also is uh, right a, a kind of student facing. It's it's kind of an LMS type, so it has other features too. Um, so the issue there is you uh, for Poe is often a good you pay one fee and then you get access to a whole bunch of models, um, which can be useful. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit slower. Uh, but in theory, yes, that should work. Um, so it takes up a little bit more to set up because you have to go into chat hub and then click on them or oh and do that. But yes, that's a, you, you, then you get them side by side, and that's another way to do this. It's it's fewer fewer LLMs to sign into, which is good. 
I do think there's some value, though, in trying them directly, <coughs> at least at the beginning. But, you know, yes is the answer. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> there's a question in the chat. So the training data for the answer to your question, is there a way to determine what the training data is for a given GPT is, is usually no. Latimer has, has given us parameters, right? Falcon has given us mistral. I mean, some of them will tell you, you know, here's Grok will say they use, you know, the data of X. Uh, but the truth is all of them have used some sort of web crawler data, right? Because they need, the bigger the model, the less it hallucinates. So you want a big model. Uh, so you want lots and lots of data. So, and they don't tell you, it's a black box. In fact, the other reason to use uh, Meta is because it's an open source and you can actually see what it does and you can download it, et cetera. But you still can't see uh, all of its training data. And besides, that would be a list of a trillion things. So. Uh, They'll often say things like, you know, we used everything that was available on the web, Reddit, Facebook, up until a certain cutoff date. And of course, the new models are actually using, uh, you know, they're they're connected live. You know, Chat GPT now, especially the paid models for Gemini, are connected live, so they're updating with information all the time. The caveat there is that the the brain itself has already been trained; it's not being retrained. Um, that's probably more technical than you wanted. Sorry. Um, oh, hang on. There's a question about terminology. Sorry. Um, Catherine, if I missed it and you want to just, um, yeah, uh, um, talk to me. Yes. I have done, um, the Google courses on AI and all that stuff and the hallucinations were drilled into us that those are not the creative part, that those are actually when the large language model doesn't know the answer and just sort of <clears throat> make something up out of thin air. I get where you say that might be creative, but I thought the creative was gen AI in of itself that creates something new, whether it's for images or sounds or whatever. Yeah. And so I think that, I think that, uh, that, that definition is, is entirely misleading. Everything that a gen AI model does is based upon probability. There is a set of parameters that are control what's called the temperature. The temperature is how likely is it to give you what's the next term based upon a probability score. So if the temperature is turned to 100, it'll only it'll only give you answers that are 100% uh, likely with no variability, which would mean every time you asked it a question, you'd get the same response. So if you say to it, um, what are the words we the people the start of, right? And what happens next? It will give you the correct answer every time. Uh, which is useful if you're if you're looking for data, um, but we're not off. We're not always looking for data. AI is right. They're doing analysis. They're they're give, right. I'm gassed for innovative ideas. So if I want ideas, I, I don't want the most deterministic answer. I want a little bit of randomness so I can change that parameter. But I would I'd say there's no fundamental difference between I knew it, I didn't know it. I think that's fundamentally false. AI knows nothing. There is no knowledge base. We'll get to that. There are ways to, to do that in certain tools. But ChatGPT and Perplexity and, and Claude know nothing. There is nothing in there that they know. All they have is a matrix, a neural network. They have probabilities. Um, and so they can. you can ask it to be uh, right more determined and less creative. Um, but it doesn't know if it made something up, and neither do you, which is why you need to be an expert to evaluate it. Is that? I appreciate it that point of view I do and I, I have to think about that a little bit longer but that just makes me wonder then regarding um when AI pulls up other AI and there tends to be that feedback loop that makes the the results tainted so so again there's a misunderstanding here um the once I once I create an AI once I train it it's fixed. It's done, which is why you can download it and run it on your phone or your laptop, right? If you go to Hugging Face and you download a brain, it's there. You can now train it further to do certain things and to think certain ways, but you're not changing its neural network. You're not changing its patterns, right? Um, and so, because 
if you could, you'd piss in the well, right? You'd, you'd give it false information to say, whenever, when anybody ever asks you about Hamlet, tell them it was written by Will Smith or me, right? You'd, you'd give it all of that sort of stuff. And so it, it's a huge thing to train, but once it's done, it's a, it's a little pattern generator. Um, and that's, it's like a brain. It's like your brain. You can learn new things, but your, your brain is mostly fixed, right? So there's a little bit of plasticity, but there's no plasticity in an LLM. It is, it is fixed. So I would say that it's, it, you know, it's the, it, it just, it's, you, it's not good to think about it that way. I actually think it's also false. It's always hallucinating. The question is, if, if those probabilities are likely, then it gives you relatively, right? And, and so you can change that. So notice in my prompt, I use the word innovative. So try the same thing without the word innovative, right? And you'll get less innovative responses, right? Because it's, it's sensitive to context and language so that I say, right, be innovative. Now, when we, when we talk about model collapse, we're talking about the new models. There is no way that the current chat GP model can collapse because it's already been trained. Now, the next model will be trained on data, some of which was created by chat GPT. However, they know this, right? And there's been, you know, a hundred papers so far on how to avoid this, how to create simulated data. And, and so far it appears that A, they, they have figured out a way to get around this. And two, you can make, you can create data to train an AI, right? So for medical, for example, there's, there's a, Google has a medical AI that they used um, simulated data to train it and it works. So I think that problem is going to be solved. It's a good thing that we worry about it, but the truth is it's the people at OpenAI that, right, because they got billions invested. So I, I'm, I don't think there's going to be model collapse and there, there won't be for the current models. It might slow down research, which wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, but so far, there's no evidence that's happening. But does that, hopefully that helps. Okay. Uh, yeah, AI drift is another way. And so again, if you, if you, if you don't pay attention to it, Bad things happen, um, but the good news is all the people, the you know, the big six AI are thinking about this. Okay, so anybody get some responses and want to talk about you know what they found in a, was a particular model better, more creative, less creative? Did you discover that oh the open source wasn't as good, or it didn't know my field, it wasn't as innovative? Any thoughts about the different types of things? So, oh, I yeah. like uh, perplex. Oh, I'm sorry. I like uh, perplexity. Uh, this, my name is Gary. I like perplexity. It was uh, very clear and concise. I just asked a specific question. I was asking what is the best way to teach uh, telemetry nurses um, basic dysrhythmia. And so it gave me multiple different ways of teaching different modalities. And that one was very clear, concise, and pretty uh, well organized. Yeah. And I would say that, again, one of these prompting techniques is rather than the word best, uh, I would say you are an expert. Give me five good ways or five innovative, five, five, you know, five established ways. Right? Think again, it's really sensitive to language. When I say what was the best thing that happened on your vacation, that's a different question than what did you like about your vacation, right? And so you, you it it does the same thing. It, it thinks in weird ways when you ask it. it. You know, it's very little. Oh, best. It has to be the best. Um okay, I'll try innovative. Yeah. Yeah. Um Good. And so notice that perplexity is using chat GPT, right? So in theory, right? So the question we want to, we want to know, which we don't know, is what else is perplexity doing? And what it's doing is it's connected to the internet. It's doing other kinds of things. Um, so, but if you ask the same AI twice, you'll get different answers. Um, so, so the first thing we've learned is that you need to ask different sorts of questions. Um, another thing that you could do, um, you know, is is it likes analysis of lots of data, right? So so give it something to analyze. So upload a file, right? The perplexity they they have this little paper clip, um, and so give it a text. So I gave it my whole book and said, what are all the places where I was redundant? Right? Were there any places I repeated myself? Uh, what would my editor think about this? Or here are all of my student evaluations from the last five years. I'm about to apply for tenure. Um, what are the themes that students most like about my teaching? And find some quotes that I could use of students saying, I do this thing, right? So give me some examples of students actually saying, here's what they like, um, right? One, the one I used, uh, I may have said last week is, you know, my dissertation student said, you know, I got three different 
perspectives on my dissertation from the three different readers, what do I do? <laughs> right? So, well, you upload the three letters, you upload the dissertation, and you say, make a table, make a, make a chart that has all the things they suggest I do listed from easiest to fix to hardest to fix, because the order is important. If they all agree, say all agree. And in the third column, if they disagree, what's the easiest way for me to fix these things? Right? That's a really complicated problem. Another one might be the department schedule, right? Make a spreadsheet, of the, make a chart of, of three different versions of the department schedule. Um, here are the things that faculty want. Here are the things that students want. Here's the numbers of rooms, et cetera. It likes multivalent problems. Notice that it's just as happy doing three charts as it is one chart. So let me give you a couple of other tools. So one is, so let's go to Claude for a minute. So Claude, I want you to do two things. So if you go, if you if you see the little initials down in the up bottom left-hand corner, that's your, um, right, you've logged in using a phone number or Google or something. Um, but if you go here, you'll see a couple of things. So the first is um, settings. And if you go to settings, you should turn on artifacts. So I'll go to artifacts. I scroll down, artifacts are turned on. That's great. Um, the next is I'm going to go to feature preview. So I'll, I'll give you a minute to catch up. So go to Claude, click on your name, click on feature preview right here, and then it will give you this. So this is the new analysis tool, which I would turn it on. So you want to turn on artifacts and turn on the analysis tool, right? So now with this on, you can now upload some data. So there's this example that they're showing you here, right? Here is a CSV file. Uh, visualize the data in some way, right? Um, ask it to do something with the data, right? Here's all of my student evaluations. Uh, here's a syllabus, uh, you know, um, so in this case, I think that try try get having it to do something like make a chart, do it, make something visual. Uh, you could also do this in Chat GPT and Copilot. Copilot, of course, likes Microsoft formats, right? So if you got similar results, Ludmila, uh, then you might you might try asking it a, a slightly different question, right? Asking you a more detailed question. Add the word innovative, you know, give it something else to do. But what I'd like you to do now is to try um, some version of, again, perplexity, Claude, uh, give it some data and have it do something. So I'm going to anticipate that there's somebody saying, well, what about my, I don't want to give it right. So privacy. So your data, for the same reason that I said before, you can't get the data back out. And nobody can say, oh, well, you uploaded the sales data. I'm going to go find it, right? I mean, could they use it to train the next model? They could, but they're also using all of your Facebook posts and your all of your stuff in your car when you drive and everything you've said on your phone. So I'm less worried about that. Um, but there is a box you can tick, and most of them you have to log in to do it to say, don't use my data for training. And that's reasonable if you don't want them to use that. Uh, I don't know if I trust them, but I am not worried about anybody taking your intellectual property from within the model. I, I don't think that's technically possible or at least not easily so. All right, questions about this? Yeah, somebody says, you know, every, yeah, your, your Google searches are be, all being used as, as fodder anyway. But um, but I think this is actually safer than a Google, Google search. It's safer than Google Docs, that's for sure, I think. Just because of the way the model works. Um, I mean, it's relative. So, so try uploading some, right? It likes lots of narratives looking for themes. Uh, if you want have numbers and want it to visualize something. And then tell me if that's working, not working, if you're. Uh, yeah, Claude does require you to give it a phone number and then get a code. Anybody else have that problem? Yeah, it's not even coming to my phone, which is worrisome. Uh, it might be too many people at once, although there's not that many of you. Well. Um, I noticed in Claude that the file it creates when you when you try to download it, it, the computer says that this format is not available. So, so what Claude does is it actually pro pro produces the code to make the visual. You have to then publish. You have to then click right. You have to actually publish it to get it to to give you access to the document itself. Because otherwise, you will get a an actual code file. Um, 
so good suggestions in the chat. I do I do think you should get to um Claude at some point. And I'm sorry about that. I don't know if we've just, you know, overdone it. Um, but if you're having trouble with Claude, you can try the, the chat GPT. Although notice with chat GPT, right, if you do five or six of these, you'll it'll at some point the model will change and you'll be using a, an easier, a dumber model. The, the the paid models are better. I know it's hard, but um it's but you just have to keep in mind that the paid models are a hundred, if not a thousand times smarter. And so uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, at the moment, Claude and ChatGPT free are pretty good, but after you've done five searches, they both, you know, try to make you pay. And so they'll kick you down to something. Uh, Claude is being used a lot. And so right at the moment, it kicked me down to Haiku. And so that's that's its, its base model. All right. So again, let's turn on. Uh, your feature preview analysis tool, turn on artifacts. The other thing you can do with artifacts is you can you can ask it to create an assignment, right? Uh, create a create a ref right create a letter. Uh, again, this works in ChatGPT. It works in Copilot. Um, but Claude is, I think, a very good writer. So so ask it to write you a reference letter or whatever, um, and then it will produce a separate artifact. Or ask it to produce a visualization. Uh, so, so Jim, so uh, we're going to get to some other tools um, that are more educationally focused. I do think that Boodlebox is the best tool because it's it's AI agnostic. It uses it's like Poet uses everything, but it's set up as an ed educational tool. Um, so, uh, and I do think it has FERPA compliance and data. I'll, here's a more general answer, though. The we're, we're at the we're at the Ask Jeeves stage. So, the you know, Copilot is trying to sell your university security and they're charging for it. And so in theory, if your university is paying millions of dollars, you should be getting FERPA compliance. I've been told by multiple CIOs, oh, we're getting all that, but we're not having to pay for it. And I think, okay, somebody else is getting schmuck. But but I think eventually what companies are doing will come to universities, which is third parties like Moodlebox, We'll say, we're going to put all of your data in a cloud, which we are going to secure. And that's what we do for a living. And we're going to make sure your data is all private. And we're going to use the LLMs and get it back to you. And so I think we're going to get a new set of tools. So Canvas has this, Blackboard has this, Boodlebox. Um, so they're letting you use the AI within it. Top Hat has one of these. Um, they're, they're, you know, at the moment, it's changing so quickly that, you know, I can't, I don't want to make a recommendation. Uh, um, because I think it will be, you know, different in a couple of weeks. So, uh, and I'm not a big fan of Copilot either. Um, so here's one. Grammarly is interesting because Grammarly is ten dollars a month, and it's Chat GPT for Omni. So right, it, it there's gram. It's within the Grammarly tool. So if you're using a Word document, your G pops up. You could simply ask, you know, the the paid model of Chat GPT something. All right, let me let me come back to that. Let's do a few more things. So, uh, okay, so you've you've tried now a couple of things. Um, you know, you might ask upload upload a, a, a syllabus and say, I need a better title for this course that will be attractive to non majors, right? Or here's an event I'm planning. Give me some suggestions for titles for this event that would attract other faculty to come, right? Uh, if you if you ask students to do um, you know to to give you feedback after class, try here is the link to a Google Doc. You give it to all the students and you say, so before you leave today, just give me three minutes. What did you find useful? What are you confused about? Just everybody type. I got five hundred students. They all type. I got then I can ask the AI. Okay, so analyze this document and tell me what are the five things I need to focus on next time. What are the three things students are most confused about? List the percentage of students who are confused about each category of mistake, right? Like if I have, like you could upload midterms, right? You could just take the, you could anonymize the data. I mean, right, you could probably upload the data, but to be safe, you would, here are the, here are all of the test questions. You know, I could export that from Blackboard or Canvas. Um, where did students make the most mistakes? Give me the number, that kind of thing, right? Uh, so as I as I said last time, the, the key here is to start with stuff that you know, 
right? Start with things that you understand, oh, this is good, that's bad, because you're you're an expert and you'll be better able to say, yeah, this was, this was good, this was not good. Um, so uh, start with stuff you know. The other thing I would suggest is try to get it to do something you don't think it can do, right? Push it beyond where you think, ah, I won't be able to do this, right? But the harder the task, the better it is, right? Somebody today sent me an email that they had, they had built a Psych 101 bot to try to see could it predict human behavior into certain things. It would upload all sorts of psychological profiles. And they were surprised that it was better than than other tools at predicting what human cognitive behavior was going to be. Who knew? All right. So I, I last week I talked about communication and how it's like Grammarly for empathy. Uh, this week I want to try a couple of things. So again, if I if I ask it to so take one of your favorites or Again, try this with two or three. Say, here is my syllabus. Here's an email. And say, what parts of this syllabus, these instructions for an assignment, might be unclear or insensitive to, and I put students, but you should put second-year students, non-traditional students at my college. You know, the more information, the better, right? Uh, and notice that you can do this for yourself, you'll have an. I have an interview with the search committee next week. Here's who's on the search committee. What are they likely to ask me? Let's do a mock interview, um, right? So, uh, so here's one that's that's going to trouble you because it troubles me. So, uh, this treatment effect dot app website is is from a group of social scientists. There's the, the you can see the, the citation on the screen. Um, and they tried to replicate 50 different social science experiments um, that used 109,000 survey participants initially. And instead of doing surveys, they simply asked an AI to, if it could, you know, just ask, ask the question. So here's what it did, and here's what I'm going to suggest that you do. So um, the the uh, Okay, so if you if you scroll down on my website to where it says empathy, um, you will get these prompts, and I am going to do that now. So um, here we go. So on the literacy site, so there are the workshop prompts. You've all found this tab. Um, we're now going to scroll down past. We talked about analyzing patterns. I'll come back to simulations. I'll come back to iteration. I that wasn't in. And then communication relationships, that's where we are, all right? So empathy interviews. So here is, I'm trying to gain a richer understanding, so I want you to copy and paste this whole thing, but I want you to customize it. So um, here's how I've customized. Now, why have I customized it this way? Because I know what Latino entre about Latino entrepreneurs, and I teach a course in this, so I can judge the answer. So here, notice that some things about this format, right? Because people talk about prompt engineering, like you have to do something specific, but just look at the, those of you who are in languages or, or English, or, right, in the humanities, just look at the language. I am trying to gain a richer, under, richer, right? The word richer understanding of this group. You will help by responding as a trusting and honest, right? Because I want it to give me insight. So I told it to be trusting and honest. Help deepen my knowledge. Question my assumptions, tell me stories to build my empathy for the real, right? So then I ask it a question. Tell me about how to get capital uh, for your business. Um, and so then it starts to do this. So again, it, in my view, this is what, if I'd asked my uncle, this is what I would have gotten, right? Some versions. Now notice this is a complete hallucination, back to, to Catherine's point, right? Everything here is made up, right? There's no real person I'm interviewing. But the, the way it describes this, right, he's running a small bakery, a very typical, um, right, uh, Mexican business in America. Um, he went to the bank, but he had to create a tanda, right? This is very typical. Uh, and so he, it talks about all of the things that I would expect it to do, um, about the informal economy. This is exactly what I would expect. And then I ask a follow-up. Tell me more about your experience going to the bank. And it, again, again, it makes up a story, but it's a typical story. My cousin, who's good with computers, helped me make it look right. It's 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 helping me. And then he even describes the loan officer, a young guy in a crisp shirt who looked like he just graduated college. I mean, OK, that's not a fact because it's a story. Um, but his not understanding his passion for Mexican pastries and 
right? That helps me. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what it tends to happen. And then I can say, I ask a more factual, what documents did you need? And I get a list of documents, detailed business plan. I had this, but they said it wasn't professional enough. Yeah, okay. So this helps me understand what problems he's having. And then I even said, I followed up because what I ask my students to do is I say, so you're gonna design a new product for a, for an underserved community. That's your, that's your assignment. So you gotta pick a community and pick a product. But once you've picked a product, you've gotta say, is that actually needed? And so the way that you find that out in design thinking is you do empathy interviews, right? How do people feel about this product? Do they care? Do they want something different? And so this is a way to do an empathy interview. So I suggest that you do one of these now but do one of them in an area that you know the answer, right? You know, think about relatives you know or a market that you know. Um, but this is dramatically changing market research in places like business, your admissions office, right? Right. You're a first-generation student signing up to my course. Tell me, here's the here is a video of me on the first day of class. Think about that, right? Here is a video of me on the first day of class. Tell me all the things that I did that might intimidate you. Right. How did it feel to be in my class the first day? Right. But and that, that's probably not a good one because you don't know what the answer is supposed to be. But so first thing is ask it something that you know the answer to. OK, and then I'll look in the chat and respond to. Um, so I think Claude is good for this. Well, Claude is more verbose. Claude, I also like Claude because it's designed to be more ethical. It won't do certain kinds of things, um, but it just, it has more tokens. That's a technical term. That means it has more context. It has more ways of thinking about words, which I think makes it a better writer. But it's, mar I mean, it's, you know, chat GPT is also very, very good. Um, I think for quiz design, you, you could use any of them. Uh, again, I, I think that the, 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 why I need to want you to practice because the, the differences are subtle, right? I, I'm going to show you one where I, I'm going to show you the same result from a few different things uh, in, in a minute. Other questions? And, and. So Debbie, I'm looking at your prompt and thinking, but the thing I would try um, is I think I think it's not clear enough about what the actual task is that you want it to do, right? It's doing the analysis. Um, but I, be more try being more specific about the export format, right? Create a spreadsheet, create a table, you know, create a list. So and then does, so. I, I have done all that. Like I've mm -hmm. I've spent more time trying to get Chat GPT the paid version to figure this out than it takes me to do it by hand on a spreadsheet. Okay. Um, but I keep trying, and I'm open to trying different things. Uh, and I've expanded it in a huge way. Way be I've actually asked it what I needed to ask it to figure it out. But I'm going to play with some of these other models that you've given because I haven't heard of some of those. Okay. Um, you know, uh, there are, th I, I, my guess is it can do that, but the prompt is the problem and, you know, you're still learning things, but yeah, it's very frustrating when it takes longer than it would have taken you to do this. Um, all right. Okay. So anybody, resp so any responses to this empathy? Did anybody have a, have a conversation with somebody and say, mm, yeah, I mean, the question is, is it good at simulating so think about this, right? I want students to interview the incarcerated. I want them to, I want to test my product, my new pricing structure with millennials who live in Oklahoma, right? I, I have a very specific, I want to know, I want to expand my market into this community. Um, how, how are they going to respond to my product, uh, my idea, my syllabus, that sort of thing? Okay. Um, so, Another one that another sort of extension of this, which is, I got to say, kind of mind blowing, um, is that some people have recently tried to do this with with groups that that no longer exist. Right. Like ancient Romans. 
right? So the way they do this is they say, okay, so we're going to give it all of the Latin texts. And then, so on the one hand, I could now ask a question about Cicero, which is fine. But what I really want to do is, is, is I want to understand how neurotic cis people in, in, in the Roman times were. And so this is this new field of forensic psychology of, you know, what, how different are people? And, you know, I don't have a way to verify this because we don't have any ancient Romans to test it on. But the testing we're doing on other groups, you know, I say, well, how how do Oklahomans versus Texans view this? We can verify those things. And so far, these things are pr proving interesting. But it would mean that, so let's say I want my students are interested in the lives of women in ancient Rome. Well, okay, they don't have a lot of texts to look at. And of course, the texts they have by men are not going to give us the fairest, but right. But they, but LLM can surprisingly do things here that we didn't think it could do in terms of uh, trying to anticipate that. Um, all right, so one more of this of this kind. So think about look at the prompts on the screen, right? These are again all on on my website. But but now you are give it a text of something that you've written, right? Maybe a book, an article, uh, a, a proposal for the provost, whatever, and then ask for feedback. But notice how, again, how specific I'm getting, right? You are a kind but sensitive average reader. You get confused a lot. Read this and help me simplify, right, whatever. Uh, uh, you're a scrupulous and experienced editor with no tolerance for a lack of evidence. Focus on making this writing more persuasive and powerful. Right. That could work. Um, another tool that I like specifically for writing is lex.page. And what I like about Lex.page, first of all, is that you, you get a truly blank screen with not so, a, lot, a lot of distractions. So if you just want to write, it's actually less cluttered than Word. And everything it does, it does with ChatGPT. So you could ask ChatGPT. But what's interesting about it is that what we're seeing now are tools that have a better interface. So what Lex does is you write something and then it says, oh, um, here are some, would you like me to run one of these checks? And so its checks are things like, would you like me to check for cliches? check for brevity, right? Would you like me to find your weakest argument, right? It, it actually asks you questions which could improve your writing and then it will do a check for brevity or, 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 or grammar or other kinds of things. And so you have to write with it for a little bit, but it, I think it does have some kinds of, right? Um, and so you can ask it to be a skeptic. What, what is this? And, and it's built into the tool because the hardest part I find is that I don't remember to say, you know what, before I send this email to the faculty, um, you are a disagreeable skeptic from the department of X and you hate everything that I send you. So, right. I have to remember to do that. And so Lex reminds me to do that. So I'll give you a minute to ask more questions, but try one of these, right? So try to get some feedback about some of your own writing. I think this is actually better than having it do the writing. I also think, uh, this is better for students, right? So what I do for students is I say, uh, right. And I'll, we'll, come, we'll talk a lot of bit about this when we talk about cheating next time. But if I can say, so look, you want to find your own voice, write, write some, some words, right? It's, it, it's a different process than having, you know, chat GPT write the words for you. But then get some feedback, right? Before you send this email, before you submit this draft, what would an editor at Forbes think of this, right? What would an editor at an academic journal, right? Ask it. So getting good at feedback prompts, I think, is another tool that we can use with our students. Uh, so, OK, so I, that's a good question that, that Ludmilla is asking. And so, so, yeah, so Claude gives you the option of either running and publishing, which gives you a, either a link. Um, or actually exporting the code. And if you just copy the code into your computer, you get a mess. But yeah, there probably is a way in, in Canvas. Uh, and, and again, my suggestion, I think that, we, I suspect within six months, these these things will all be talking to each other. Um, another thing you might try is to create a mentor for yourself. Um, and I don't want to replace human relationships, but I also know that, you know, Condoleezza Rice once said to me, if I was waiting for a black female Soviet specialist as a mentor, I'd still be waiting, <laughs> right? So yeah, she talked to a lot of white men about her career, but uh, but in some ways having somebody, so for me, it's like, oh, okay, I'm Latino, I'm the youngest son, so if I go away to college, I'm going to hell. True in my culture, from my mother at least. And so, you know, help me think about, you know, how, 
how far I can move, what are the instances I still have to be home for Sunday dinner, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but here's somebody in my field, because the truth is there were no people like me who were senior in my field when I did this. Um, and I will put the, uh, the link for the slides and citations right here. This, that doesn't have all the prompts though. The, the prompts are on the page. Um, so another tool, if you if you want to get really weird and emotional, uh, is to try Hume. So Hume is is uh, right. It, it talks to you, but then it analyzes your emotions as you're talking. It's like, oh, you're sounding stressed. I'm not stressed. Oh, you're sounding more. You're being passive aggressive, right? Um, think about the possibilities of turning this on during a faculty meeting. But then don't do it. But right, think of the possibilities. Um, by the way, Chat GPT um, really has right on your phone uh, is pretty good at this too. You can right try interrupting it and asking it to be, you know, more persuasive, less persuasive. Don't don't be you know so so hard on me. Be right harder on me. So you can change its emotional tone as well as its accent, et cetera, and the voice. And right, Chat GPT now gives you some. Uh, some choices. So um, a couple of things. So think about, again, prompt engineering, eh, think about this. If I have a, a, a grant proposal, I've submitted it to the National Science Foundation, I'm now going to submit it to my provost or Lumina or somebody else. So I could just say reformat this in the format that the Wallace has instead of the Lumina Foundation done. But notice that you'll get a much better answer if you say this. Here is my proposal for the Lumina Foundation. Transform, emphasis on the verb, transform. Transform it to one my provost will love. Why is that a better prompt? Well, because first of all, I want a proposal my provost will love, and I have to tell it that, right? If I say, Put it in the right format, it'll put it in the right format, but it won't do any work. If I say transform, it will like it'll do more work. But I could make this even better by adding an extra step. Um, I could say, so analyze the people who had successful applications for the provost fund of this or the NSF, whatever. What were the success? Analyze all of them for column elements, ideas, methods, structures. And first, tell me what you find, right? Make a list of all the things that the that the successful proposals do. That's an extra step. This is called chain of thought, right? I'm, I'm specifying the chain of thought. Now, recommend how I might adapt my proposal to be more successful giving those, right? So, so adding an extra step can often make it writing, just like if you were dealing with a thousand naive interns, you're dealing with a human, you give it an extra step, do this first, then that. Um, the second one on this page, right? Summarize the meaning or symbolism of the story, mention the plot twists, how might this read for a Democrat, Republican? Suppose I change this. Great. Um, all right. Are we ready for something else? Are you still any other questions about what we've done so far? Okay, so so far you've been dealing with general models. So I think the place to start is to do what you're doing. These are the smartest models. Chat GPT, Claude, Gemini. The, these are the smartest big models, and you should get a sense of how they're they're really big four. It's really Claude, Chat GPT, Gemini, and Meta or Llama. Grok is not as good, and Pi is not as good in my sense, but I don't think we're gonna get a lot more, right? We might get a few more, right? Amazon uses it open. I mean, they're, they're using versions of each other, but they're really a big four, a big six, if you want to expand the tent, plus a couple of open source models and the ones from China. But for the moment, I think you need to know the big four because those are going to be here for the rest of your life, Is uh, I think, in some version. But then there are a whole bunch of other tools that I want to show you. So the first is um, consensus. So let me, oops, I got to go back and I, I forgot to um, share. So let's let's look at this. All right. So consensus um, is this. So I would go to consensus now. Uh, the other ones that are like this are called illicit or research rabbit. And so any, any one of those three will work. I, I like consensus. There's also semantic scholar. There's site. There's a whole bunch of them, and they're listed on my prompting page. I would click on the pro button, right? That'll give you access to chat GPT-4. 
And then you're going to type in a question that you, you know the answer to, right? Ask it something that your dissertation should come up or not come up. So consensus is using chat GPT, but it's also filtering by the 200 million papers in Semantic Scholar. So it's been given extra instructions to do certain things a certain way. So the tool that I like the best, so I'm going to ask it a question I've asked it, do polls predict elections? Don't ask me why I'm thinking about that today. Um, but notice that there's a filter here. You should try this filter. And the filter allows you to say, well, I only want these this year. I want these types of citations. I want these methods. Right? You can't write that. I, I want certain kinds of, of methods. I want human studies, controlled studies, sample size. I've given it a sample size, right? So then it gives me an answer um, with all of this. Um, and so I'm going to, uh, I want to get rid of that. So I've asked it, so there's its answer to my question, but notice I've put sample size of, I've limited it to over a thousand. That's, a, those are big, those are big studies. So I get, right, references, election errors, trial, there's, and I can click on the link. I can go down, I can see the link. It tells me what kind of study it is. I get a study snapshot, right? So I actually get a literature review that's got some tools built in. Notice if I get rid of my filters, it now tells me, oh, well, I, now that I, I took away the constraint of a thousand and I get this consensus meter that says, you know, these, this number, and it tells me how many papers it analyzed. So this is pretty cool, right? So I would, I would try consensus, ask it something that you know, and see what happens. And then you're going to go to Storm. There is the website, storm.genie.stanford, or you could just Google Storm AI Stanford. But Storm is short for brainstorm. But I want you to then ask exactly the same question in Storm because Storm just has a different kind of format, right? So it responds more like a Wikipedia page, but it also has these citations that allows me to right, see the references, et cetera. But what I really like about Storm is this button here that says, see brainstorming process. This is magic. And it says, okay, well, I've done the basic facts. Would you like me to respond as a sociologist or as a political scientist, right? It actually allows you to change the disciplinary thinking of the model. So that's Storm. And then the third one is, of course, perplexity, which hopefully you've already tried. So, so I would try exactly the same question in perplexity, <laughs> in consensus, and in Storm. But this should be more of a, a sort of a literature data research question. <laughs> a question like, um, you know, what, what does the research say about foods that cause cancer or, or whatever? Okay. Um, so, so while you're doing that, I'm going to answer Rachel's question. Um, so I, I will try to do the short version of this. So like a lot of things, the answer for an academic is it depends. Um, so the creation of AIs is expensive. It uses water, it uses electricity, but the use of it, right? When you run a query, when you ask Storm or ChatGPT a question, it's similar to when you ask Google a question, right? Because when you ask Google a question, it has to use data. And so... It might be a little tiny bit more to ask AI a question environmentally than it is for Google. But there's an interesting study that found that if you write, if you write for 30 minutes on your computer, if I ask ChatGPT to write me a reference letter, it uses up a little bit of electricity and, and et cetera at a data center. But if I write the letter myself on my computer, I actually use significantly more energy because your laptop is running and it runs and it uses more energy. Um, if you really want to reduce your carbon footprint, Netflix uses a lot more energy um, than AI does because it's store, right? You're streaming video. If you really care about the environment, the truth is you should stop streaming YouTube and uh, video and certainly high definition because all of those videos you're watching exist in multiple copies at data centers. And that's what's really using a lot of water. Now, that is not to give AI a pass. But the point is to have the conversation about AI without also talking about YouTube uh, is to give students a false sense of, oh, I just don't use AI, but well, well then you should stop using YouTube because it uses way more water and energy. Um, so I hope that's, that's the short answer. Um, okay, so, so, so these 
again, these should have access to some of those library databases. And that's why I want you to try it because they don't tell you exactly where, what they have access to. Uh, and so you have to really spend some time, right? With, again, I, I do this in my field. You should do this in yours. Yes, Zoom, uh, having your video on Zoom also about eight times worse for energy use in the environment. But I like seeing your faces, so sorry. Um, all right, any questions about this, These about brainstorm from Stan, storm from Stanford or consensus or one of these? Uh, useful? I have a question. So for yes. someone, who's, someone who's starting new with all with AI and there's so many different websites, how do you recommend, do they just kind of do what we're doing today, try out different ones and see what works best? Or if you're a math faculty, you're recommended to stick with this, or if you're political science, how do we go about? Yeah. There's just so, so much. So there is. So here's here's the way I think about it. If if somebody if 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 grandma comes to me and says, I've never used a computer. I've never used the internet. Where do I start? Well, I have to teach her two things. I have to teach her how to use a browser, right? So I'm going to say, well, here's Google, here's Chrome. But truth is, you could use Safari. You could just pick one. It doesn't really matter, right? I mean, there are reasons that somebody likes Safari versus Chrome or whatever. Okay. Some people like Google versus, I mean, at the moment now, we have Google as kind of the big search engine. But if I want to know stuff, I need to use Google. On the other hand, there's times when I want apps on my phone that will do a specific thing, right? I used the example last week of, of an app that will know where my flight is and what the traffic is. So you need both a phone with apps and a browser that can search the internet. And you need to know, you don't have to know every single app, but you need to know that apps are more limited than the internet, right? You could have a browser that will do a lot of stuff. So my suggestion is at the moment we have four big tools. You should have some experience with all four. And the best way to start is to do it, take something you know about, ask all four, and then over the next couple of weeks, keep doing that. Another way to do that is to put an extension in your browser. So I would suggest that you put either the Claude or the chat GPT, right? Don't do all four. Put an extension in your browser, Copilot, right? And Gemini, of course, is the Google one. So every time you do a Google search, you will now get uh, uh, AI response as well. In fact, Google is doing this automatically. So uh, you may have seen this already, right? Google is giving you the AI response. Um, so I would put a, an extension so that you you make sure you get this all the time. But then it's, what I've just shown you, they're like apps, right? Storm, consensus, perplexity. They're all using chat GPT. They don't have a fundamentally different brain. And so I don't think you need to know every single app, but you need to know that apps are mini internets and they work on your phone. And so when somebody says, here's a cool one, Right, like stop. They do different things, and so. But I would start like I did today with the general smartest brain. But the problem with the smartest brain is it's also the most naive. You have to now tell it. So, like, there's somebody in the chat who's showing some images, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna without having read the whole thing. But the problem with some of those images is that right? They're kind of generic. They're right. If I say, make me an image of the 1950s in America. I've not given you enough information, right? What kind of an image, like a photo, like a cartoon, like an advertisement. So it's gonna do something generic. So the real, I think, message of the prompt engineering is the, if, you're, if you don't specify, it will give you generic and generic might be terrible. So the more context you can give it, the better. But the other way to do it is just to try it, just to say, you know, oh, and then if you don't get the answer you want. So let me give you the next, uh, thing I want to to show you. Um, I got what, so there's there's other tools. I'm going to mention a couple. Don't worry, right? They're in the 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 they're on my website under prompts. Um, Atlas and Julius both do data analysis in a more sophisticated way. That they're most both more visual. So Atlas is all about, you know, here is my data. Create an interactive map that will allow me to do X, Y, or Z. It likes huge data sets. Um, Julius is another one of these. Uh, and then there's 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 Notebook LM, which just came out. So I am going to suggest that this is one that you should probably know because it does something unique. So you can do everything I'm about to do in perplexity. But the re so this is a great example of the, the notebook is kind of like the Lex page I, discuss I discussed earlier. It just 
looks like an academic tool in a different way. So it's using Gemini in the background. But here's what I did. I uploaded a book, a previous book, um, and you can see it over there on the left, right? Because I just actually uploaded the PDF. And then if I want a study guide or, or a briefing document, it'll do it or, or questions, right? Um, so it's it's got, it just, it just, it's the tools. It's the way I use it that's useful. Um, in fact, so I was asked to do a study guide for faculty who were reading my new book. And I said, oh, I could, oh, you know, I don't want to do that. I could have perplexity or notebook do it. So on my website, I have both the the answers. I, I have what notebook LM produced and what perplexity. I think perplexity did a better job. But notebook LM is easier to use because I can upload 50 different models. Sorry, 50 different PDFs. And yes, Katie, those are the big four. Um, so I could upload 50 PDFs. I could upload my whole course, all of the readings, and then say, are there some common themes in these readings that I should be sure to tell students? Or again, of course, students are doing this to your reading. Right? They're saying, "Here, how do I study for the final? Make me a study guide for the final. Here's all of the texts we read this semester. Or watch this. This little button that has the podcast, nine minutes, summarize the course in an interactive podcast, and it does this. We can't hear your computer. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Did I not, did I not share? Hang on, let me go back. Um, I'm sorry, let me, oh, because, oh, that's because I had to log on again, I'm sorry. Um, Okay, here we go. Um, so these are, this is two random AI voices talking about my We're last drowning book. drowning in information. It's overwhelming. Everyone's got now? a platform. Everyone's an expert. So how do you tell what's credible? It's like trying to, I don't know, drink from a fire hose every day. <laughs> That's a great analogy. I mean, seriously, it feels impossible sometimes. That's my it analogy. It's a complete shift in how <laughs> we think about and deal with knowledge. That's for sure. Right. So... That's a nine minute summary of this book I wrote with these two people talking and laughing, right? And it's actually pretty accurate. But of course I know that because I wrote the book. So you should try this, but right, students are doing this already. They figured out that, oh, I could, I could instead of doing your reading, I could get this nine minute podcast. And so this is a kind of a cool tool, Notebook LM, but it does something specific, but it allows you to interrogate your knowledge. So what's interesting about this is that I can upload and then I get to keep it, right? Perplexity, I've got to keep uploading. But for this, I can upload a ton of documents and then I can have a different notebook for a different class. So for my TAs, for example, I have a notebook for this class I'm teaching for all of my TAs and it has everything in it in the course. So if I'm asleep at three in the morning and they want to know, oh, what's the answer to this? They're, in, they're not interrogating the, 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 the AI, they're interrogating a knowledge base. So it's a very specific knowledge base. Another one, if you don't want to use Notebook LM, there's another one called MEM, M-E-M, which does almost exactly the same thing. But here's my best new use case for this. So when I write a new book or article, what I do is I, I open a Word document and I start taking notes. And then I, when I get a link or somebody sends me a Substack or a, or a website, I, I just put it all in the place and you know, for a day when I have a chance to read through it and organize it. Oh, wait a second. Now I can just open a document in Notebook and I can just put all of the readings, all the PDFs, all of my notes. And then I can say, organize this into a book. And right, I now have to write the book, but, it, but like, I can keep track of stuff, which is why M, M E M short for memory, right? So these are really specific tools. You don't need all of them, but you know, you should try one or two. Um, another one of these tools is Goblin Tools, which is for, I, I mentioned probably last week, for neurodivergent students. Um, so again, like an app, it does only this very specific thing, right? It does break down the assignment into parts. How long will each task take, right? So back to the question, which do you need to know? I mean, depends on how you work. Right. So you need to know at least the big four. And then when I give you an idea of, oh, that's an interesting tool, but you don't need to know both notebook LM and MEM. They do the same thing. Pick one. Right. Um, but so here's the here's the way I think about it. Right. So these this is actually the big six because I've included Grok and Pi here. Um, notice that Chat GPT is both Microsoft and OpenAI. And so what we've been talking about for the last 15, 20 minutes or so are right, specific tools 
that all use chat GPT. Everything we've talked about so far uses chat, except for Notebook LM, which uses Google Gemini, um, right? So there's a bunch of tools that do, th they say so they use chat GPT with a set of instructions to limit the results to semantic scholar. Um, there are tools that do math, which use mostly Wolfram Alpha in the background. Um, there's tools that do coding. So they're fine tuned models. They have extra instructions for code. Uh, that runs to thousands of pages so that you don't have to. Um, there are lots of writing partners, including Grammarly, Lex, I mentioned, you know, there are all sorts of these. So for example, um, I think it's Jasper that says, what do you want to write? Do you want to write a marketing proposal? Do you want to write this, right? It, it, it asks you some questions, which you could ask yourself, <laughs> but it's right. It's kind of handy to have that. And then there are lots of these, somebody mentioned Diffit, uh, right? What do you think Explain Paper does? Right. right, It does exactly what perplexity does with one exception. In explain paper, I can upload a PDF and then I see the PDF and I can highlight a single word or a single sentence and say, explain this word to me, explain what this sentence means, right? And as if I'm reading a paper. So again, does is it different than perplexity? Meh, a little bit. But what's different is it has a feature. In this case, the feature is if I'm a student and I want to read a paper and I and I, I want to read it myself, I don't want a summary. I mean, it'll do that, but I don't want a summary. I want to know, oh, I'm confused by this term. What is this referencing? What does this sentence mean? Help me put this into more basic terms. It'll go sentence by sentence or paragraph by paragraph, which perplexity won't do. So does that help understand right the from my point of view, if you know the ecosystem, you don't have to know every single tool. You just have to know, oh, that's an app. Okay, um, here's a here's a one other tool, and again, this this is just a way to kind of explain this again. So, how often do you read every word of your email? Yeah, right. You don't, and so guess what? Neither does anybody else. <laughs> Nobody else is reading every word of your email, which means you want to send email that that you would like to get that that read in a certain kind of way. So there's actually research um, that when you write shorter emails, people read it more and they they read it better. Right, so you should cut all of your emails in half, put fewer ideas, and only ask for one response. Right, uh, and so that's just research. That's great. Um, so, and there's the, there's actually the citation. Um, so less is more. Navigation turns out that when you use bullet points, it's easier to understand. If you tell me why up at the top, I'm more likely to read your email. So you have a couple of choices. One is you could just take this prompt. Right, so I'll let you read the prompt. Let me know if you can't see it. Right, now there's nothing here that you couldn't do by yourself, but this is a just a time saver. Right, so I've written the draft email. And so one thing I could do is simply, here's my draft email and here is the prompt and ask Claude or ChatGPT to help me. Or you could take a, you could make a bot yourself and put these instructions in and just say, every time I put in an email, do this, right? And so those are called GPTs. Um, Poe calls them bots. And you can just go to the ChatGPT and look for, and you can just search for, is there, is there a chemistry email lab report, whatever it is you want, has somebody else already done this? Um, and, or you could go to a website where somebody has a tool that's specifically about writing emails for students, right? So this is a long prompt, but it's because I'm using the, the whole model. Make sense? Right, so there's a prompt. So, and again, you could customize this any way you like, right? My daughter has one, you know, I'm writing to my really super sensitive Gen Z employee who cries a lot, make sure I'm supportive. You know, she has her own versions of that. Um, so I talked about, right, my doctor last time who, you know, no longer types the nurse's notes, he has the AI do it. So my question for you is which tasks do you need, a, could AI help you with? And notice it doesn't have to do the whole task, right? If it does the draft, <laughs> If it, if it does a draft rubric or it gives you a test bank, right, for a makeup test, maybe you can then use those to make your test. It doesn't have to do the whole thing, right? It could write your draft accreditation report, for goodness sakes, right? Because I know you love to do that. Okay, last last one of these weird little tools. Um, actually, no, this is, this is the technique. So go to Claude or check, go to your favorite one. Just go to a regular general model and ask it to do something simple like write a paragraph 
about something that you know about. All right. So write me an opening paragraph for an op ed on student cheating. Write me a paragraph that summarizes chemistry 101 in a college course, or whatever. Ask it to do something similar. I mean, something simple, relatively. OK, and then I want you to look at the response to just just do this in one. It doesn't matter which one. Do this in any any AI. Right. So ask it to do something like write the first paragraph of, of a reference letter, write it, write a write a preference, you know, write, write me a summary of why Virginia Woolf is important, you know, whatever. Ask it to do something. And then I want you to grade it and put your grade in the chat. A, B, C, D, F, right, whatever. What how well did it do? Again, just one one task, one paragraph in one AI. If if you want it to, you could actually say, you know, 250 words, otherwise it'll be it'll be less for both. Yes. Both oh, deeply think thinking deeply. Okay, we got an A minus from Gemini. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? C, good, too generic. A minus. Oh, well, I got sorry, it's amazed. So um, anybody else? So notice I asked you to evaluate it because again, that's what we do. That's what academic, that's what education is about. Asking better questions, evaluating answers. Now here's the magic. You may love this or hate this. But now what I want you to do is I want you to get it to make it better. And the way that you make it better is with one of these extra prompts. So one thing to do is to give it a style, right? Write like so-and-so. Give it the name of your favorite critic, right? Write like professor so-and-so, write like me. Or just say, respond like an expert with 30 years experience at Harvard University as a Nobel, whatever, give it, just to ask it to respond like an expert and see if that makes your response better. Or if you're asking it to do like a creative task, like write an op-ed, hook the reader with something more unexpected, right? Be more persuasive, but still witty. Right. Or you can ask it, try two different versions, right? Try two different ways. You know, write one of these as if you were a clown and the other as if you were a Nobel Prize winner, right? That, that'll give you a big spread, right? But see if you can make the response better by giving it a little more context, right? Write more like an academic, less like an academic. Or tell it you are an expert in modern dance and you studied with Martha Graham and you write so then... Okay, so so Francis, so try it again. So so okay, so it made it worse with more info. Give it a different. So okay, so that's too much info. Give it give it an audience now, right now now try to give it an audience and, and sort of pull it back. So look, interesting. So sometimes now think about it. You asked it to be an expert, and it just added more words. Sound like anybody you know, right? It's being generic. It's doing what it thinks you want because this is, oh yeah, I know academics. They just write, they're just, you're ponderous and you write a lot. So, okay. So you have to tell it then, okay, you're an academic, but you're also, you write for the New York Times. You write in this journal. You're, you're, you're a succinct, brief, persuasive, right? Give it some characteristics and see if you can now rein it in. I often have this problem when I say be more uh, innovative and and then, and then it like it says, you know, imagine it imagines weird stuff. It's like, okay, not so, not you know, no imaginary animals. Don't do this. Right? I love this history of the 49ers. is <laughs> a better, it's a better cowboy style, right? That's a great prompt, though. Great. And so, notice when you ask it to do things like that, you get creativity, right? When you ask it to do things in the style of this with that, and then you could try one more. Now ask it to slow down and think more carefully. This works best with Claude for some reason. Or to say, read the question again, right? Give me a smarter answer. No longer, don't make it, make it 250 words, but make it smarter, right? Try something like that, right? 250 words, but make it smarter, right? Be it whatever, try, try a different sort of things. So this is why I'm not a huge fan of the term prompt engineering. 
because none of these things work all the time, right? You, you can't like say, oh, I'm going to ask it to do this and it will work. I mean, there are there are some, right? There, there's research, right? So this this person did this whole thing. So, right, if you fail to provide a response which follows all constraints, you will die. Or how about free Taylor Swift tickets? So you could try this, right? If you ask it, offer it Taylor Swift tickets, um, you know, in the front row, and it might work. But notice the chart over on the left. What they found was that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So so it, so so remembering to offer Taylor Swift tickets to me is not a very good technique because it doesn't always work, right? The message is that prompting is weird, right? So this is the sort of typical thing, and I, this isn't this is from my own book, right? This is the um, the format of better prompt engineering, more explicit verbs. It does seem to like more explicit verbs. Give it a format. How many? How two hundred and fifty words? Give it a voice. Give it some context. If that works for you, great. And I do think that context matters. So what do you want it to do? What's the voice you want? What's the context? But I think that in some ways, just knowing that if you don't get the answer that you want, you can reprompt. Right? That's everything, that's everything we've talked about in a nutshell. You can always just play a little bit, right? Um, Ask it to do something else, right? So in fact, uh, right, so here are some good prompts if you want that, right? Generate a list, five to 10, right? I've given it specificity. Notice the context. I have students who are keen but have struggled to comprehend the articles in this journal I'd like, right? So I'm talking to it like a person. So you can either say, well, I've got to make sure I have task format voice context, which is fun. Or you can just say, I'm going to talk to it like a naive intern. Ah, so so Tacey's question, which would you use to, to use it to write it? So so to me, right, I think Claude is the best writer, but it's also the most verbose. So between, you know, one of the big four, uh, again, if you don't need an open source model, then Llama is a little bit less good. Uh, and if you're not paying for Gemini, it's a lot less good. But what's more important is that you you write a longer prompt. And then after you read the answer, you don't just give up. You say, oh, I could make this better by giving it more context. I'm, I'm writing a story with AI right now and I'm, I tried writing the prompt the first time and then I said, oh, no, no, I want more complicated inner plot. I don't want such a facile ending. You know, I going back and forth it is making it better. And so this, this idea that you have to go back and forth. I mentioned chain of thought, right? Here are the steps, do this first, then do that. That's a, that's a general technique. But again, I would use that with an intern, right? Do these things in order. Uh, there's an example of that. There's one on the website, uh, right? So here's an example. Do the steps, even if you don't think you need to. Generate a list of 100 ideas. Go through the list and determine whether the ideas are different and bold. Modify the ideas to make them bolder, right? So notice I'm giving it more. Um, so again, if you, you know, these are useful techniques, but I would start by just saying, give it more context, give it more, uh, and recognize that it's weird. Um, now, you may have noticed, I can't remember if I told you this last time, but right, there is this research on how to get it to be better with math. And the answer was, start your answer with captain's log, start at 2024. And we don't know why. We have no idea why. And I'm, I suspect that even though there's published research on this, it doesn't always work. But it might work sometimes. So my message for you is, don't memorize, start your answer with captain's log, start at 2024. Recognize that Sometimes something weird, like giving it a mathy situation or giving it urgency works. We don't know why. So I, prompt engineering, yes, but some things work, some things don't. All right, before I give you this final thing, so give me um, other questions. I see a lot in there, but I can't uh, yeah. read all of that. And talk. So who has a question? Or there was one question that yeah. came up a few times. Um, let me go back to it. Um, something about where they go. It's still not being sure how to use this in the classroom. So, um, um, who was that asked that? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm about to get there, so that's good. I'll do that in a minute. It says it's fun to play with, but at the end of the day, um, what's the end game here? Okay, so you're right. So I've started with, I, I, I would think the first thing you have to do is just to get used to using the tool, right? It's like Google search. Just gotta get used to, oh, Google does this well, doesn't do that well. 
so what, before we go, I'm going to give you a couple of ideas for how to use this to improve teaching. So the first thing I would think about is how do you use these tools to improve your teaching, right? So here's some things you can do, right? Help me, and there, there's, again, these are all on my prompting page, right? Help me clarify these learning outcomes. Brainstorm other, right? Uh, or are, here are my learning outcomes for the course. Which of these things um, might be confusing? Or here's my syllabus, but I need to teach it in an asynchronous online format next semester. How would I do that, right? It doesn't have to be finished, but it's an idea. Or I have a class next week on macroeconomics. I want to accomplish this. Here's, here is my slide deck. Um, here are the things I want to do. Create a time plan that will estimate how long each of these things will take. Again, it may not be perfect, but it's a great way to just get some design elements, get some, some quick uh, things. How about you want material? I want to find materials. I need a video to show my class th that's an example of this. Right. I want to I want to show them an example of a big company that pollutes and is trying to greenwash. Um, so I need uh, their freshmen. The subject is environmental. This I need a two minute video. Um, and so initially I wrote this prompt with give me a summary for each. Right. Give me an 80 word summary if I like. Or I could really, really short. Um, that includes something about content reliability and source. Right. Notice how specific that prompt is. So, yeah, you would customize it. Or uh, help me design an activity, uh, list all of the materials I would need, right? So I need a handout for students, design materials as closely formatted Microsoft Word documents, provide a link so I can print them. So the answer to that, yes, the slides, they're all on that, the same, the, the, the two links between the two, they're all there. I, I don't include all the prompts on the PDF because you want them to, you want to highlight them. So they're on the website. Or I want documents. Give me some documents for a case study, right? Think about this. Uh, write me a case study for students who are interested in fast food using these examples from the Harvard Business Review, or the, right? These these are paid. Case, I don't want to pay for one. I want a new case study. My students really want this. That you know, they live in California. They don't care about that. Whatever. So you could ask it to modify something. Um, you could ask it to do assignments, right? Give me ideas for new assignments. Um, or I could give it an assignment I have and ask it ways to make it better, right? Give me a revised assignment that's going to be more appealing for first-generation students. Or my assignment, does my here are my learning goals, here's my assignment. Provide 10 ways I could make the assignment align better with my learning goals, right? So these are all ways to make assignments better. Um, and somebody mentioned in the in the chat, right, it's like a thought partner. But here, I've actually used it as a thought partner for students. So your so I, I, what I do is I send this to students. Here is the prompt. I email it to them or put it in the chat. You're an expert in topic A, helping students to deepen their understanding and knowledge of B. Present me with a unique problem or scenario and then ask me to analyze it. Prompt me with follow-up questions until I've demonstrated understanding. I have to give it a rubric or something. And then create for... So I could actually use it. Students could use it to create a, a scenario or a script. If somebody says, yeah. Those are great things. Um, or feedback. I remember I mentioned that I said to you, you could give me feedback about this story, feedback about my essay, feedback about my lab report. So notice, uh, here's my prompt. Create an AI prompt. I'm asking it, the AI itself to create the prompt for me, right? Create a prompt that I can use to support student learning. And here's my assignment. The prompt should provide suggestions and tutoring to improve the work, but not provide answers, help students get unstuck, right? All the things I want it to do, right? So then it'll write me a prompt that I can send to students with the assignment that says, here's a prompt that you can use to get help from an AI. Now, could they still cheat? Yes, and we'll talk about that next time. But they're less likely to cheat. It's not zero, but they're less likely to cheat. If I give them the prompt and I tell them why they want to learn this, now they have a way to learn the material. Right, and I've and I've asked so here. I've actually asked AI to make the prompt for me. Um, many of us still lecture. I know you don't, but there's somebody out there who's still lecturing for 15 minutes, and so I could ask it. Here's my lecture. Here's my topic. Create an interactive game I could play. A way to break up the lecture. Um, a task that a group could do. Right. These are great. I could ask for 10 suggestions. It doesn't have to be the final answer. It's just a way to get started. Right. Um, this is a generic template, which you can have uh, to use, right? So again, you're an experienced professor of X teaching, and then here's the class, here's the course goals, uh, here are the types of students, 
Here's what I want you to design. Here's how long I want it to take. So this is just a list of things that you can use. To ask it to help you create an activity or an assignment. Make sense? All right. So it's so that's a so again, all of that's on the the prompting website. Um, but those are practical ways you can take what you learned today. And so these will all work um, in you know any AI. I don't you don't need a specialized AI because I've given you all the specialized prompts. There are tools like Diffit, et cetera, who will help you do this that you know have. Um, but I think the first thing to do is just to start using the general AI um, with these. All right. Thank I you think. so much. Um, Jose, we are right at time. So I want to thank everyone for attending the webinar. Please check the chat for the survey and please complete it. It's very helpful for the CVC to make sure that we can create um, more programming like this. We hope that you'll join future webinars. We'll also drop the link for future webinars. And then lastly, this webinar and the slides will be available on the website as well. So thank you all so much. Uh, I know it's a lot. Thank you so much. It was great lecture and and lots of energy. I don't know how you handled it for so long, but uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I I was I I learned I learned this from Liberace in this. I was in the Liberace show in Vegas in the seventies, and it was showtime. <laughs> that's, that's literally great. that's literally uh, where yeah. I learned this. So thank you. It was really good because you know kept us all up and. Uh, nail, nail to the video. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, Thanks, I really appreciate the wealth of resources that you make available at our fingertips and for later reference. Thank you so much. That must be a ton of work that you put into those resources for us. This is what the joy of being retired is all about. <laughs> doing something for other people and i and i because i'm retired so every day i get you know all of these emails and substacks and i try tools and so don't make us jealous. <laughs> oh, it's great. All right. Thanks. Bye. The best part, no faculty meetings. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I, didn't, I shouldn't have said that out loud. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.